وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِهِ لَا يَقْضُونَ بِشَيْءٍ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Beloved brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh So once again we meet together virtually That is to listen to the Quran being recited And uh, to listen to the meaning and translation of it and both will benefit us uh, in this life as well as in the Akhirah, insha'Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to uh, listen to and recite and remember the words, His words, as well as the meanings of those words uh, that we can implement. Uh, Sheikh Fuad recited from Surah Ghafir, uh, from ayah number 13 until ayah 20. From 13 to 20 in Surat Ghafir. So I will read a translation from uh, the translation of it, and you can follow with any translation that you have. We'll make a few comments on some of the ayat, and not all of them, um, because uh, of course it will be too long uh, to complete within the short time that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in translation, it is he who shows you his signs and sends down to you from the sky provision. But none will remember except he, to, he who turns back in repentance. <clears throat> so 
Uh, we'll go verse by verse, uh, just a few of them, and then we'll read the translation of the remainder of them without going into any explanation. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and he is uh, speaking to all of mankind, he shows you his signs and sends down to you from the sky provision. So there are two things here uh, that uh, he makes you see his signs, his ayat. And what are his ayat? They're everything that we see around us, both in the heavens as well as on earth itself. Uh, so it is uh, the atmosphere above us. It is the sun and the moon and the stars, etc., etc. Uh, it is all of the things that you see in this world, whether it is the mountains and trees or the, the, the rivers and, uh, and uh, other pe uh, people and things and animals and whatever it is that surrounds us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us all of his ayat, all of these ayat, uh, and there's a purpose behind them. Uh, th these are there so, uh, first of all, to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of these things could have been there uh, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing them into existence. Uh, this sh should be uh, very logical, very easy to understand. However, a lot of people do not understand that. A lot of people think otherwise and think that these things came into being by accident. But none will remember except he who turns back in repentance. That is, turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, worships him sincerely, uh, recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizes the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeing all of these things around him. So... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, that is one thing that he mentions in this ayah, uh, in this ayah here, his ayat, which are the signs all around us. Uh, and perhaps you can refer also to the ayat of the Quran, his revelations, uh, which uh, gives you a lot of cause uh, to think and to ponder and to reflect on uh, what you see around you. And he sends down to you from the sky provision, that is your sustenance. Uh, the, the food that you eat, all of it comes uh, from the sky, from the heaven. In another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in the heavens is your provision and what you are promised. Uh, so all of our provisions come down from the heaven. Uh, even if we consider it to be the, the water, the rain uh, from, the, from the sky, and this is how many of the Mufassirin have uh, explained it, uh, the water coming down from the uh, from, from the sky uh, 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 and bringing vegetation to the earth uh, and the food and provision and everything being produced from that. If we think of that alone, uh, without uh, the rain coming, uh, there is no provision uh, that we can get in this world. Uh, everything will dry up uh, uh, and all, our, all the sources of our sustenance, our provisions and so on will dry up. Uh, we would uh, ha have nothing to eat. Everything on earth would perish if the water does not come down, come down from the sky. Uh, but of course, uh, it means much more than that. Whatever comes down from the sky, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down, he sends down your provision in a variety of ways. Now, scholars have remarked uh, that these two, two things are mentioned together, his ayat, uh, which uh, are his signs as well as the revelation, uh, the verses from the Quran or, or the revelations that came even uh, to past uh, prophets before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the two things that we need for sustenance in our lives. It is not just the physical sustenance that we need, uh, the food and the water and so on that we need for our uh, sustenance on earth, for, for sustaining of life that is on earth, uh, how, uh, what we need also is the revelation, the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has given us both of those things. And we can look at this ayah even, even more deeply than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us our intellects uh, so that we can be able to process whatever we see and whatever, whatever knowledge we acquire, we can process all of that and we can make sense of it. And we can understand why all of these things are there in existence. Why is it that everything that we need is provided for us? Uh, and why it is that there are sometimes hardships and wh whatever it is that we encounter in this world, even the hardships are there for us to develop and for us to 
uh, to <clears throat> be able to overcome situations and be able to become better individuals. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all of these things for us to reflect on. He has given us our intellect itself. Uh, and there's a lot more that we can uh, reflect on when we, t when, when we read this one ayah. He it is who shows you his signs and sends down to you from the sky provision. But none will remember except he who turns back in repentance to Allah. Uh, those who are munib, those who do inaba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the words that is used. Uh, in the Quran, meaning turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Uh, the next ayah says, so invoke Allah, being sincere to him in religion, although the disbelievers dislike it. Uh, so call on Allah, make dua to Allah, Father Allah. Uh, so uh, and, and what is the implication of that? It means to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dua, a dua umukhul ibadah. Uh, dua is the essence of ibadah or uh, also that's a hadith and in another hadith or another version of that hadith uh, dua, uh, hu al -ibada. dua itself is ibadah so making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is an essential part of dua and it in itself is dua it is a part of the salah that we pray uh, or uh, any act of ibadah that we do, we, we constantly make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So invoke Allah, in other words, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask him for all that you need, including your sustenance and so on, uh, being sincere to him in religion. Uh, and, uh, he will respond, of course. He has promised that uh, over and over that he will respond to your duas, he will respond to your prayers, to your ibadat and so on. Although the disbelievers dislike it, uh, this is an important uh, thing for us to reflect on. Disbelievers are all around us. We are living in a society where we are interacting with disbelievers on a daily basis. Some of them are hostile uh, to uh, our way of life, uh, uh, to our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to our acts of ibadah, the way that we worship and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is, uh, um, is, uh, uh, is in sometimes uh, very uh, open ways that other people can see. And perhaps these are the things that irritate them. They get angry about it. Uh, maybe they get angry about the way our sisters dress and the hijab and the niqab and so on and so forth. Uh, the way that uh, Muslims may dress and how they are going to their masjid uh, regularly for every salah and so on and so forth. There are so many things that you may not uh, realize, but that may arc uh, and irritate uh, the disbelievers. Uh, so uh, it, they may express open hostility and they may not. Some of them may not. And some of them uh, are, are not like that, of course. Uh, some of them look at it in a positive way, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them all. However, whoever dislikes uh, our position as Muslims and what we do and how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how we dress and how we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all respects, uh, even you know, avoiding the haram, etc., uh, we should not be bothered by any of that. Although the disbelievers dislike it, dislike uh, how we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that should not bother us and we should continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe eventually that will have a positive impact upon them and help them to change also. Uh, another meaning of this ayah is uh, even though the disbelievers dislike, they themselves dislike to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is because many of them are involved in the worship of others beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of them are mushrikeen. A lot of people around us are mushrikeen. And then, of course, there are the atheists around us who have become very prominent in society these days. Uh, so the, whether they are atheists who totally dislike the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and claim that, they, that, that there is no God but Allah, that, that, that there is no God at all in existence, and then there are those who worship others beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever type of disbeliever they may be, and, and however they may hate uh, our religion, and however, however they may hate the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either for themselves or for others, uh, we should be 
we should ignore all of that and continue to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pray to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can protect us from any mischief that they may cause. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who can bring guidance to them and to us. He is exalted above all degrees. Rafi or Darajat. Exalted above all degree, decrees. Dhul uh, Arsha, owner of the throne. He places the inspiration of his command upon whom he wills of his servants, the one of the day of meeting. Uh, Rafi or Darajat, explained in various ways by our Mufassirin. Uh, one of it uh, relates to his attributes. The attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are all exalted. No human being, in fact, none of his creations have the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of his attributes are attributes uh, of perfection. They show the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They show the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, they show in, uh, in a variety of ways how he is uh, far superior to anything that he has created, to all of his creation. Uh, and that all of his creation should, uh, for their own well-being, submit to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> if they do not acknowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where are they? Where do they stand? Uh, they are just destroying themselves in this world and in the hereafter, in the, in the akhirah. Uh, so that is one way in which it is explained. Another way in which our scholars have explained exalted rafi'ah. Rafi' meaning Rafi, the one who raises. Not only is he exalted in himself, in his attributes and so on, but he is the one who raises uh, in degrees. Uh, that is, whoever he wishes to raise uh, in degrees. Uh, and who are the who are those that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises uh, in degrees? Those whom he places in Jannah. Uh, there are various levels in Jannah. And whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places in whatever level, of course, he has raised them to that level or, or to that daraja, that degree uh, in Jannah. Uh, so he raises the ranks of people in, in Jannah uh, and <clears throat> he raises uh, 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 and he distinguishes between people even in this world also, the believers from the disbelievers. Uh, so Allah, uh, he is a, himself exalted in rank. Uh, that is exalted in uh, in all of his attributes, and he has exalt, exalted or raised uh, the level of the believers above that of the disbelievers. And of course, he raises uh, people, generally speaking, people above others, uh, and we are all interdependent upon each other. <clears throat> He's the owner of the throne, Dhul Arsh. Uh, what is the throne? This is the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that creation that surrounds all of the other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there is nothing outside of the throne of Allah. Everything is within. Uh, the, his throne uh, comprehends uh, 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 the kursi, uh, the samawat, uh, al-ard, uh, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. Uh, is within the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The throne surrounds everything else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above the throne. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not sitting on the throne. He's not seated on the throne or anything. He's above the throne. So he is above all of his creation, uh, which shows, uh, his, and, uh, and of course, being the owner of the throne, he's in, in total, totally in control of it. So as the scholars say, you know, revelation passes through from the throne, uh, through the heavens, uh, until it reaches uh, whosoever it is destined to reach uh, on earth. And that also uh, uh, re refers to the decree, other decrees of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever he decrees passes through the throne and then to wherever uh, he has decreed for it to go. Uh, he places the inspiration of his command upon whom he wills of his servants to warn of the day of meeting. Uh, here, this translation that I've used uh, from Sahih International, he places the inspiration of his command. Ruh min amri. Ruh uh, is translated here as inspiration, but if we take a little more literal meaning, uh, he places the soul of his command. Uh, however, there are various explanations of uh, this uh, 
the word ruh. Uh, one is that it refers to the revelations, uh, revelations generally, or that more specifically to the Quran itself, which is revelation, the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mankind, or that it refers to prophethood. Not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down his uh, revelations, but also he, dec he decrees who should be granted prophethood and who should not be granted. This is one of the things that the people objected to the Prophet Sallallahu about. Why is it that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala selected him to be a Prophet above uh, other people who were greater than him? That is, in their eyes, they felt that other people were greater than him and should have received the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, has uh, uh, decreed for his uh, prophethood to be assigned only to those uh, servants of his whom he chooses. Uh, uh, he places the inspiration of his command uh, upon whom he wills of his servants, uh, so whoever he decrees, uh, to warn uh, that is so that those servants of his, those prophets, uh, or that the revelation itself may warn the people of the day of meeting. And what is the day of meeting? Uh, this uh, is important uh, to understand. Uh, it is uh, the day of the meeting. With, uh, the various explanations are given for this day of meeting. Meeting with whom? Meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our meeting, our going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and meeting with him. The day when we'll be resurrected and we'll have to face him and we'll have to answer the questions uh, on the day of judgment, etc. Uh, it also refers to uh, the meeting of those on earth with those in the heavens, the meeting of the people, uh, uh, the meeting of the people on, on earth with the people in, uh, or those creations, the angels and so on, in Jannah, uh, in paradise, in the heavens, uh, in the Samawat. Or it refers to the meeting with your deeds. <clears throat> when you are confronted with your deeds on the day of judgment, uh, or it means uh, the rewards uh, of your actions in this world when you meet uh, those rewards when you when you reach them so the day of meeting refers to all of that it also refers to the day when you meet your op your oppressor or the one that you had oppressed the oppressors and the oppressed uh, all will meet will be f facing each other uh, on the day of uh, uh, on that particular day so that is yamut talaq and the day of meeting uh, or it is the, the day when the worshippers will confront, uh, or the, the, the things that they worshipped uh, will confront uh, the worshippers. All of the idols and the gods that people had beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be confronted with all of that on the day of judgment. Uh, or it also means uh, the meeting of the early generations uh, with the later generations of mankind all of them coming together on a single plane to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me read through the other uh, verses quickly uh, without any other explanations. Uh, the day they come forth, nothing concerning them will be concealed from Allah. To whom belongs all sovereignty this day? This is a question Allah will be asking. To whom belongs all sovereignty this day? And the answer to Allah, the one, the prevailing. This day every soul will be recompensed for what it earned. No injustice today. That announcement will be made. No injustice today. Indeed, Allah is swift in account. And warn them, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, of the approaching day when hearts are at their throats filled with distress. The hearts will come up to the throats and will be blocking the throats. For the wrongdoers, there will be no devoted friend and no intercessor who is obeyed. He, know, he knows, Allah knows, that which deceives the eyes and, and what the breasts conceal. And Allah judges with truth, while those they invoke besides him judge not with anything. Indeed, Allah, he is the hearing, the seeing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlighten us by his words. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.